Hello, everybody! Where the hell is the volume mixer gone? Oh, God. Oh, God. This is not good. Don't worry. Stupid volume mixer move. Everyone say hi! Hi! Hi. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the third week of Snowocalypse, our Apocalypse World campaign. It's, it's very exciting times. Uh, I've just noticed that Chip's face is like right underneath her post-it note on the overlay, but that's fine. No one cares about that. It's only Chip. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Cool. So, <coughs> we have a dying person. It's good. It's good. Sorry. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah. So, how is everybody doing? Um, let's let's whip round. Jamie, totally wasn't responsible for a late start. Not at all. Totes wasn't. Uh, yeah. You guys just missed me a fuck off bowl of noodles. Um, so yeah, I'm ready to go. Um, bowls of noodles give him power ups. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Don't talk to me today. I'm uh, I'm full of noodles, and that's about it. Take it away, next person. Uh, all right. My uh, eeny meeny miny Joe. Hi. I was here on time. See what you did. Everything's good. <laughs> Next. Fuck off, Joe. Um. <laughs> uh, Joe, Joe and me have been talking all week because he's finally managed to sell me on the idea of watching Buffy by myself. And I'm very, very happy about it. So he gets the occasional message where I just go, What the ever loving crap is this? <laughs> For instance, the bit where in one of the episodes, someone literally falls for the, Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy trail. I nearly lost my shit. <laughs> it was so annoying. Um, but yeah, that show is a weird, weird scene. Uh, Chip, how are you? I'm very good. Uh, I'm also sporting my beautiful, beautiful snake, who's very camera shy, Lady Diddington today. Because she's not a lady every day. Well, she, well, we thought that she was a boy for like seven years oh, yeah. until we, we took her to the vets, and turns out that he's a she. <laughs> as so, as yeah. you do. But yeah, I'm excited for tonight. It's gonna be good. You haven't drank an entire bottle of wine this time, so you might no, no. Last week I was quite drunk towards the end. It's good. Um, it's good stuff. I'm sure no one noticed. No. Quite sober today. I might go and get a glass of wine later, but that's the thing. I think, I think you can. I, I hope you can manage a glass. Uh, and finally, dearest, dearest Johnny, how's Drex? Good things. I'm good, thank you. I am drinking. This isn't water. Um, <laughs> G and T in a little, little. Yeah. Diddy glass. Uh, as you can see, chat. I have made my bed. I hope you're happy. Look, I, I actually put effort in for you guys. Yeah. It's because I love you. I had to. It's, it's you know. It's you know. And care. I made sure to learn the name of Super Skitty Seal Kitty Five Thousand. Yes! Yes! I can say it. I can say it quickly. Oh, it's 55,000. I'm there with you. I'm so happy we're on board with this. Um, yeah, beautiful. well, I, I have done Eric. no such preparation today. Today has been a bit of a, a crazy day for me. I just forgot that I had appointments and ran around the place like a headless chicken. But none of that matters because today real life is irrelevant. We only care about awful life uh, in the cold. So, who wants to remind us of what the hell happened in the last session? I nominate the drunkest person, Chip. Well, Chip could probably do the first bit, <laughs> and then might run out of memory. I have no idea what happened last time. Uh, I was pretty uh, much falling asleep at the end of the stream because I drank, like, literally a whole bottle of wine. It's good, it's good. Uh, yeah, great. Jamie, you, you were involved in the beginning of the last session, so why don't you I tell me what thought, happened? Yes, um, right, so... I believe the last session kicked off from the end of the first session in a seedy little bar somewhere uh, where it's the first real occurrence where all of our characters actually were in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I believe it was Rourke, one of... Um, was it Cecil? Yeah, yeah, one of Cecil's men, uh, the mayor of the city. Uh, Rourke basically picked a fight with Stein. Um, mm. Things didn't go too well for Stein, um, and relied on really being backed up by Lux uh, and eventually by Joe dissolving the situation. Um, that particular scene... Dissolving ended... Red as nearly escalating. <laughs> Until he was like, ah, go back to your party. I just, I just reshuffled that... the odds in our favour. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That, that was a very heated moment where we were against the chat and for the chat. Like, 
Does yeah. he die? Does he not die? So instead of actually resolving it, actually, yeah, okay, fine. We didn't dissolve it. What we did was we sent it outside yes. and left it in the hands of Lux and Midnight to escort Rourke home. Okay. Uh, which they did. Yeah. They, they got him. They got him back to Cecil, and uh, Stein and Tudor had uh, a mini palaver yeah. where they basically discussed um, the existence of this thing known as Wintermute. Uh, neither of us know exactly what mute, Wintermute is. Uh, we just know that it is a uh, an entity that exists, and it has appeared to us in uh, in visions of the maelstrom. maelstrom. Yeah. Um, All right. I'll, I'll I think that's about as much as I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Lux, do you remember any more specific parts of your journey back with uh, with Midnight and Rourke in tow? Possibly the parts that Midnight doesn't remember, so you can do her half of I storytelling. I vaguely remember this, but not very well. <laughs> Uh, I have awful memory about all things. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah, no, so basically yeah, we went off. Uh, I wanted to kill him. Uh, and we were with Greg as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Greg also kind of wanted to kill him. Greg uh, was on the, on the like, it's probably smarter we don't side. Yeah. He's, yeah. Um, and then uh, Midnight persuaded me. Like, it's like, do you want, do you want to not kill him? Yeah. And basically, used, I used one of the hit and hold to agree, like, fine. Yeah, just back down, went, yep, here's what you um, want, take it. And then, so I let, I let Lux go into the elevator alone with, um, Gork, was it? Yeah. Gork. Uh, they went up, uh, and then they basically got pissed together. Yep, they got they more didn't drunk sleep. together. Did not sleep they together. Did not sleep together. Midnight did hypnotize Rork. Um, yes. So she now has hit her hold over Rourke. And I just kind of wandered back to the bow and drank a bit. It's good. Um, yeah. So I'll cover the last few bits because there was a... I think there was... Everyone had a little solo scene and I don't think many of you remember it. So we saw where everyone sleeps. We saw uh, Lux's oh, yes. converted school bus uh, on, the car, on the garage floor. Um, Stein's garage with his ha hum ha hammock like tied up between two... Uh, big machines down in his garage. Uh, we saw Midnight's, um, like, well, Cecil's, like, mansion that he basically stole brick for brick from the surface and reassembled underground, um, where she had crazy nightmares and we saw her innermost fears, which are basically not being important, which is an amazing fear for this character. I love it. Um, and finally we saw Tudor stayed with Greg and his, uh, his husband. And then I think the last thing we saw was Tudor and Midnight blackmailing Parcher, the food producer, uh, into like coming to the court meetings and listening to him and following Tudor's lead. And uh, Stein and Lux are around to see three uh, skidoos arrive in town with, um, we just saw one of the guys uh, take off, uh, we saw one of the guys take off his mask and, um, big blonde dude, and he announced that he was from the Wintermute Institute here on behalf of Dr. Tessier. And, and in not quite so cliche terms, essentially said, take me to your leader. Um, cool. So that's where we left off. Before we get into the stuck into the action, though, there is some bookkeeping to do. So let's highlight some stats. Now, there's some interesting things from this week. One, uh, three, sorry, Three of the, the polls had six votes, whereas one of the polls had seven votes. So basically, we've surmised the chat really likes... One person in the chat really likes Midnight and doesn't like anyone else. Uh, the other interesting thing that happened is we had a lot of ties. So we'll go through the ones that weren't ties first. So Tudor, you get to highlight Hot. And Lux, okay. you also get to highlight Hot. Yay! Right side, Hot side. Now, the, the other ones were Midnight has a three-way tie between cool, hard, and hot. How appropriate, Midnight and a three-way. Hey! hey. Um, that, that, <laughs> it's not phrasing, <laughs> it's quite deliberate. Um, yeah, so a three-way tie between cool, hard, and hot. Uh, so I guess in this circumstance, I get to choose. But because the other Stein has a tie between both cool and hot, 
my decision is, is that tonight is the night where everybody gets a little bit sexy. So, everyone highlight hot. <laughs> Good. It is going to be the session of seduction and manipulation. Oh, I'm all my... of you are going to have to flirt with me over the internet. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious and stupid. Well, um, you have a cock and I have a snake, so this could get interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest chat up line ever. I have a seal. Two <laughs> It can be broken. Uh, yes, uh, so the other one is that we have to highlight a second stat, so let's go around the circle. Uh, who has the highest HX with Tudor? I have one. I think it's James, I mean Stein. I've got two. How much, how much HX do you have with, um, with Tudor? Ben? I think you only have one. I'm um, at midnight still then. Uh, zero. Zero. Oh yeah, because you start like negatives with everyone because you don't get people. Yep. Um, okay, so Midnight, pick a stat for Tudor. That isn't hard. 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 <laughs> Get cheers, cheers, Chip. Fucked up. Oh. <laughs> Fucking brutal. No weird, great. <laughs> to be fair, you do have a very good way of going hard on people. You, your, your stat is bad at it, but if you use your frenzy to get a mob, that is your weapon. It's a terrifying one. Uh, okay, so next. Uh, who has the best HX with Midnight? I have one. One, but it's leveled up, if that counts for anything. Yeah, no, it doesn't count. One. Really. One. Okay, three-way tie. Um... Well, you know, Midnight in another three-way. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it. it's the night of three-ways for Midnight. I mean, the night of three-ways, yeah. I could just good. scrap my notes for this session and we can get straight <laughs> to the fanfiction, if that's what we want. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 leave, not... that, leave that for r slash Matthew Triple X. That's right, guys. R slash math and triple X for all your dirty fanfic needs. Oh my god, please shut up. Okay, um... That totally needs a link. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> if it exists, people find it. Let's have... Uh, well, it, as, it as Midnight exist. just screwed over Tudor, Tudor, pick a stat for Midnight. Oh, with... with... She currently has hot highlighted. You can have hard as well, then. Everyone's getting hard and hot. There's, mm. That's mainly why I did it. Yeah. Why. Uh, okay, so next is uh, who What H Who has the highest HX with Lux? Plus two. Uh, plus three. Plus one. Uh, okay, Stein, pick a stat for Lux. I'm going to do the chat a service and say hot. I already got hot. Everyone, Everyone has hot. hot. Everyone has hot. Can you, not, did you not, can you not highlight it twice? No. No. Oh, oh uh, double, double XP. <laughs> double XP for every seduction? No. No, oh, you have to pick a different oh. one. To hell all with it. I, I think I'm just going to go. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Give me sharp. Sharp. Hard. 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 So, <laughs> you're going to get hard and you're going to... Going to get hard and you're going to get hot. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. love having yeah. zeros. All my stats are zeros. It's gonna be great. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! It's fine. It's fine. You're a filthy XP whore. You're just gonna power level that one. <laughs> well, this yeah, is the thing. Of, we all know that there is no way in hell uh, that Lux would have gone aggro uh, in, on Rourke in that last session if it wasn't for the fact that he had hard highlighted. Yeah, it's he true. Had hard highlighted. Uh, okay, finally, who has the best HX with or hex with Stein? I've got Zero. plus three. You've got plus three? I've got zero. And I presume you have something shitty as well, Lux. Oh, yeah. Lux? Three? I think Lux might only have one or something. So shitty. Uh, sorry, uh, what, who am I? What X is this with for? Stein. With Stein, I have zero. Okay. Uh, Tudor. Well, Stein. there's a very tempting theme to continue here. <laughs> so won't get Every single uh, person. I'm going to mix it up and give him weird. Okay. Yes! God, Joe the Power Gamer. Okay. What? Oh, me? Weirdly hot. Cool. Um, right. So we have some, a, a, a hot weirdo and then a bunch of people who are getting hot and hard. It's good. It's good stuff. Uh, cool. So, I think we'll, we'll skip things along a couple days from where we last left things. You can um, do that? Yeah, just time skip. GM can do anything. I can just say, it's a year later. 
everything is fun. <laughs> but I'm not that mean. Um, so we'll start with. Um, I guess we have, first we need to. It's been a couple days. We'll get to what you've all been doing in your intervening days in a second. Uh, but first of all, I uh, have two things. One, uh, Midnight, have you settled on your advance move? Are you going with that? Getting yeah. the hell out. Okay. Uh, I will put that in your character sheet in a second. And then, Tudor, if you would be so kind as to roll your fortunes. See if anything's gone <laughs> wrong. Always a, always a tense moment in the game, though. Absolutely. Okay, so you are you are in surplus, but you must choose one of your wants. So are they? Uh, what what are your wants again? So you both have access. Desperate to or judgmental, I think. Okay. Well, okay, so because I think one of the things that's happening quite soon is that you're going into a big court meeting, aren't you? Yeah. We decided that last session. So are we going to arrive with some like there's been some crisis and everyone is desperate for you for coming to you for a solution, or are we going in with everyone being pissed at you because you've not done something right. You know what? You, you can pick, Fimbo. You can oh, pick. No, this is your bloody move. I ain't going Fine. Desperate, then. Desperate. Okay. Do you have an idea what the crisis is at the moment? Do you know what's gone wrong? There has been... Uh, actually, two other people. There are two members of his court here. Uh, Midnight and Lux. If you guys know what the... Uh... The big snafu is. Do, do tell. So what? So there's something that's gone wrong. Yeah, something's gone wrong, and everyone is. Uh, I believe in the rules. It specifically states. Uh, let me scroll down. Characters in the crap. God, this playbook can be annoying. I love this game. I don't like this book at times. Uh, want desperation. When your people don't want, they'll do anything to secure their... Oh, wait. They'll do anything to secure their future, including turning on their own. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what it does. Never mind. Never mind. I'll, 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 that's that's all me. Leave that with me. Uh, just hear Chip whispering to her snakes in the background. Sorry, she's just being a bit hyperactive. Right, I've got it. She hasn't, been at, she hasn't been out all day, so she's a bit hyperactive. Tensions are high with Cecil, people have been beaten up, fights are breaking out in the streets. Oh yeah, you're, you're slowly tearing this town apart between the two of you. Ten tensions it's... are growing high. Yeah, okay, cool. We're, bu we're building towards something. Um, midnight, character sheet, uh, other moves. Um, that is a cool move, and the move is called... So this move that uh, Midnight has taken is called Eye on the Door. Uh, the, she gets to name her... In a bad situation, she can name her escape route, and she rolls plus cool. On a 10+, plus, she's gone. On a 7 to 9, she can choose whether to go or stay, but if she goes, it costs her something. She has to leave it behind or take something with her, I get to tell her what. And on a miss, she gets caught vulnerable halfway in and out of her escape route. Um, what, did I, what did I just call that? Eye on the door. Okay, that move is now on your character sheet. Thank you. Fantastic. Right. So, yeah, we pick up a couple days after we left off. The uh, the, the guys on, like, Snowmobiles from Wintermute are staying up near the, um, up near in Cecil's compound in, like, guest places. Uh, they're, um, <laughs> they're keeping mostly to themselves. Like, Midnight, you've maybe seen them once or twice. Like, the one guy who took his mask off we saw was big blonde dude, um, He's, like, had a few conversations with Cecil. The other two guys have, like, not, like, changed out of their big fuck-off parkas and, like, snow gear. Like, because you have to wear specific survival gear to ride a snowmobile outside because no face constantly. Um, yeah. So what have you guys been kind of up to for the last couple days? Um, is that, um, have you been, po like, I presume Stein's been poking around with his engine some more. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I think I realized like, I last time gave you like some possibly unfair things. But I think because I realized you already have weird electronica and this thing is yeah. an electronics device. So basically, I think, yeah, you just reach into the back of your five, pull out this cord. It just happens to be the right. It's like finding the iPhone charger um, that you need. And you just go, oh, boop. And yeah, you, you've got like an interface and you, you start being able to tell that this thing is it's a super engine. And 
whatever, like, the if you were engine, to, you say. It it could set it it's it's pretty widely applicable. Of it's it's a compact, high supply power source. So you could plug it into something and make it go like buggery. Um, whether that or you could like try and you use the energy source in something else if you want to make some kind of like epic laser I, gun. I have fancy bionics. Could I use it on me? Uh, I thought you had weird ass electronica. Oh no no! Like we were doing on character description, like there's bionics as well. Oh yeah, you, well you have your Nothing... um, your tech wear, don't you? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think if you wanted to build like to put this, I guess if you you've been sitting around doodling up schematics, I think yeah, you realize like to make a person with this kind of thing, you'd have to replace like and use it effectively. You'd have to replace most of their body. Like, so it'd be like an Iron Man situation. It would have to be at the core of them. <laughs> yeah, you, if like you could maybe build a suit, but like that would require some serious industrial power that you don't have. <laughs> yeah, like um, yeah, and like you also have to get correct weapons. Right, like there's no way in hell you can build repulsors with the your like your junkyard and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think you work out like it's you could probably like either yeah chuck this in, in like a car shell or something and make it go real fast or be just a monster of a machine or you could possibly try and rework the um the power source into something else like if you wanted to maybe give your um augury antenna a giant boost at some point yeah you might be able to oh. make that one. yeah that one's going to be an interesting one to do fictionally for us but yeah uh, that uh, you, you have this thing um what have you been doing with the plants by the way have you been taking care of them i have um in a sort of almost uncharacteristic like out of character thing, yeah. for some, and he has actually been nurturing these plants. Well, yeah, because the thing of like, you've never seen like green plants, like ever. Yeah, these they're, they're sort just, of like treasure. Yeah, it's it's the yeah. equivalent of like I don't know, if a fucking dodo turned up at our door and like and was like, I shall be your pet now. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like you have the world's only dodo. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so Tudor. I, I believe you said you wanted yes. to visit the market, didn't you? Very much so. Okay, um, what did you want to get? I want to get some armor. Right. And what are we talking here? We're talking like one armor, kind of like... So the, the, the scale goes, there's, there's stuff worth one armor, which is kind of the equivalent of like... It could be clothes, or it could be like light... Like le it's, it's like leather armor almost. It could be like motorcycle leathers, or something like that. Um, it, it, it's not yeah, necessarily just, full armor. Just some kind of hardened leather armor thing. Okay. Going. So, Don't want to look like I'm too too prepped for battle. Just okay, so prepped. you're walking around like Duke Franz Ferdinand with your fancy like bulletproof jacket-ish thing, which you're apparently, apparently bulletproof like military coat. Um, witness me reference my World War One history. Jesus. Well, well done, you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um. Not even a history major in the group. Yeah, I think I think you can get a hold of that without much difficulty. Um, it'll cost you probably a couple barter. Really? Um, what is? The, did you say you found a specific entry on like how much stuff should cost? That's the thing I've never really got in this in this game. Is there's no real way of defining Most how much stuff. Most guns costs. appear to be one. Page two four one. Barter two four one. Uh, right. Fashion armor with one arm because motorcycle jackets, chaps, there's camps, leather arm placement. Actually, no, yeah, you get that for a barter. Um, yeah, so what, is, what does it look like? So just don't up your barter because you got one barter from your fortunes. So what, what, is, what does this look like as a thing? Are you, are you, or is it just kind of like you've kind of traded out fancy flowing robes into a sort of more military wear that's kind of got bits of a few plates of metal and like a few bits of leather to more, be more resistant and stab proof. Is that just all it is? It's just kind of kind of classic Skyrim like hardened leather rogue style armor. Oh, okay. Alright, so you've got you've gone back to back in time with this stuff. Okay. Obviously. Uh cool. Um Lux, what have you been up to for the last couple of days? Hey, uh, hey. What done? I think oh, oh I sorry, probably... sorry. Apparently to Wandered out, bought some, bought some fancy armor. What else? And I want to buy a sleeve pistol. Ooh, aren't, isn't that Lux gear? No, nope, common firearm. Uh, yeah, I have that as well. So yeah, it's definitely a common firearm. Fair enough. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, you can, you can pick up one of those. Um, that feels... That feels a little rarer, to be fair, to be me, i got to say. Like, can I roll a manipulate to get it for can, one no, button? No, what you can do is there is a barter move. That's uh, barter so we, if you open the basic moves, so when a character goes into a holdings bustling market looking for something particular to buy, and it's not obvious whether she should be able to just go and buy one like that, the player rolls plus sharp. Uh, and then there's a bunch sharp. of Sharp. Great. Yeah. So give me that sharp roll. Let's see how well this goes. Ba -da -dum. for the sharp roll. Oh! Boom. Boom. Yep. Um, on a 10 plus, yep, she can just go buy it like that. So yeah, part with another barter. You get a sleeve yep. pistol. Um, full, full. So yeah, you've traded out for like this kind of fancy armor and like maybe a big coat of some description. And in this like contraption in your arm, you've got a flickable out like sleeve pistol on full, full Schultz. So I love that movie. Um, cool. Okay. Yes, Lux. What is, what is Lux uh, been up to? I probably would have joined him at the market and got some, basically, under some better underleathers for my, like, basically, it's kind of a, um, snow... Your riding suit. I, I normally wear, like, a snowboarder's outfit, basically. It's kind of, right, yeah. it's, it's probably best... There's a lot of recycled ski gear and stuff yeah. going around. Yeah, um, but so some leathers go in, underneath that. Um, cool. Uh, uh, to basically just get me up to one armor. Okay. Like basically, after getting like bit, really reasonably badly, I'm like, oh, I should have something to stop me getting bit. Yeah. Okay. So cool. like, it's just some. It, like it doesn't really change. If I'm wearing my normal like snow stuff over the top, then you don't really see it. But okay. Maybe looks slightly more bulky. Cool. Um. So yeah, I went went shopping for some leathers. So yeah. Uh, uh, to my of the second. Get one armor. Uh, we uh, can also act under fire for me. <laughs> okay. Roll plus cool. Are you sure you don't want me to 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 seize by force? Nope. This? nope. Okay. Uh. There is nothing to be violent against. Ouch. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I think on the second or third night, you get like basically a fever. You're kind of bedridden for the next day, mm -hmm. like you're just sweating buckets. Um, like your uncle is in and out a couple of times. Arpus has been like, what? Like he gives you some water and keep, looks after you. And like, I think by the time we get to the court meeting, you're like getting back on your feet. You're a bit weak, but you're okay. okay. Um, yeah. Dead cool. rest and such serves well. Got it. Uh, is there anything else you said on the, like, your one day? You go to the market, pick up some stuff. Uh, well, I, w I was going to say I went out and patrol and stuff, mm. but I guess probably not then. No, uh, definitely did not do that. And finally, in that case, yeah, no, just um, yeah, which explains also why you haven't looked into the plants or any of that stuff you reclaimed that was obviously quite cool. Uh, finally, midnight. What has midnight been doing? She's just been lounging about in her in Cecil's palace lady of leisure that she is mm, kind of uh midnight's been you know laying low after the whole situation um yeah. at the bar um but she's you know she's got her little she's got her eyes and ears all over the place and she's just been okay. tapping into what's been going on in the village i mean obviously there's been a lot of things happening and yeah. she's going to be at the council meeting so she's been just you know getting some info ahead of time is this you attempting so, to read a situation it could so, be. Yep, yeah, that's that is that is definitely the charge situation <laughs> of the town and its yeah, what its goings on. That's that is definitely that move. Uh, okay. You don't have heart, you don't have sharp highlighted, so this doesn't give you XP. But roll it. Oh, I've just realised. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. Give me that sharp roll. Okay. Not saying it. Um. Ba -bum 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 -bum. Sorry, I'm kicking the bad goes out the way at the start. By the way, a thing that I forgot to do is um, each of you needs to be... Whenever you roll sharp, whenever you make a move off the back of information I've given you from my sharp from reading a situational person, you get plus one to that move. So if you read a person and you discover that, uh, like, that this is how you can get them to do what you want and you seduce and manipulate them with that promise, you get plus one more on that roll. Uh, if you read a situation and say, like, where, um, where is my true enemy? 
and I say this guy, and you say, I shoot him in the face, you get plus one to your seize by force. Stuff like that. Um, so, I keep forgetting that rule. So if you guys want the bonuses to your rolls, and be less likely to fail, remember that rule. Cool. Um, okay. So let me just check my MC moves quickly. What am I going to do that's bad to you because you failed? Hmm. Um, Judo, just while he's doing that, <clears throat> I am invited to your court meeting thing, aren't I? We're supposed to be reconvening there, aren't we? Yeah. 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 I, I presume we're possibly all invited, given that. I think, well, you like... guys are on the court, but Stein has a special invitation based upon oh, his. Am I on the court? Yeah, you're a follower yeah. of, of Judo. Well, yeah, so it's a court meeting, not a um, general council of the town meeting. So yeah, it's a court meeting. Um, and yeah, Stein is coming along to deal with the weirdness that is this winter meet stuff. Um, I'm going to say... Okay. I, I know what's... um. Yeah. I think maybe it's... Uh, this isn't necessarily stuff you see. But like you go out and you meet... Um, maybe you, you wander out into town off on your errands and such. And you meet... Shooter, like, because we know you guys are friends, you actually get along. Um, and at this point, I think we've established that Shooter actually kind of trusts Midnight, like more so than he would a normal person. That's, I think, what we decide as the the HX advancing, X advancing. Oh. So yeah, I think you go out to meet um, him for like drinks or like a meal or something, and like, we see you nip into like one of the court members' houses to go have dinner with like two court members and Shooter. Um, and we just see, as you go in there, we see, um, Cecil's butler, just, like, emerge from one of the shadows, and just, you see he's completely, see uh, w the audience sees that he's, he's observed you. Midnight, however. Uh, cool. Yeah. So. We reconvene, I think, um, yeah, with, with, the, it's the day of the court meeting, uh. Dun, dun, dun. Where does the court convene? Pub. Town hall. Pub. Well, pub is not... always the correct mate. <laughs> town, ta there isn't really a town hall because it's just kind of okay, Cecil's house. Make... Okay, yeah, Cecil's house. Yeah, but like Cecil would not let no. 20... Do it in the pub. We clear the pub out. <laughs> cool, okay. I think it's it maybe a... a we like... rent the pub for the day. Yeah, I think, like, that work. Work. I, think, I think Judah has the influence to basically empty a room. Yeah, I think you know, East Harrow and like um, some other big guy like standing guard at the door, and yeah, like everyone turns up to this pub. Um, I think the thing we get just before you go is um, maybe it's as you're like on the the second floor where Cecil's place is, and as you're like heading to the elevators with a couple of maybe one or two court members in midnight, Judah. Um, you see Sheriff and a couple of his boys like stride out of one of the sides and goes, All right there, everyone. Everybody having a good evening? Not doing anything untoward? Like, still got the, like, big fuck-off six-shooters in his belt because he's really gone all in on this cowboy aesthetic. Um, <laughs> like, you can tell the only reason he's not wearing spurs is because he can't find spurs. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, no, you can't tell that, because you don't know what a cowboy is. Um, but yeah, he kind of strides Not over and like, gives you sort of all a cursory look over, a few snide remarks, but he'll, he'll, he slinks off unless you engage with him. Um, yeah. Anything said? No, just look disdainfully at him. Okay, cool. Sheriff wanders off. Alrighty. So yeah, we head down to the um, to the, the back to the spigot. It's been cleared out. Uh, I'm on the third floor again. Um, I think uh, the lady uh, from your court, whose name I have, uh, Margaret. She's always a little like tangent. Always looks a little more squirrely when he's down here. Margaret kind of acts even more aloof and disdainful of everything. There's a few of the other comments who don't like being here, but you can tell like, as you all settle in, there's an edge of nervousness to many members of your court. Um, and yeah, you've been hearing about, yeah, like, fights outbreaking and people getting, like, lynched from, um, who've professed to know your, about, like, to be followers of you. Uh, you see Parcher and his assistant, Jeremiah, like, sitting in the corner of the room, 
and like he doffs his hat as like uh, doffs his flat cap as you walk in. Of course he does. Um, yeah. Um, I assume Stein and uh, sorry Tudor and Lux. Or both, uh, sorry Stein and Lux. You're both already here. Uh, yeah. Is um is Sparko around? Is who's sorry? Is Sparko a member of the court? No, Barker. Barker, Barker is not. Barker's like okay, cool. just some. He, Barker and Gemma are both just kind of handy men. Uh, heavy lifters, yeah. that kind of stuff. They are. They would be the serfs um, of of re-established Pax Britannia. Um, cool. Britannia rule. Uh, Britannia rule. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but, yeah. Lux, Lux is is there, kind of looking like is is not, would normally be significantly more animated, but he's kind of looking quite pale and just kind of sat yeah. down, kind of quietly mm, on I the think, edge. I think Greg has come over and said, like, "Make sure you're okay." Um, yeah, uh, I'd yeah. probably just be- bemoan to him, like, slightly more held back from normal, but just like, fucking bark, t- fucking thing he let bit me, fucking give me a fucking fever. <laughs> he kind of um, like a... yeah? Sorry, I have a question, I need reminding, who did I piss off in the bar last episode? Barker. That is Barker. Barker okay. was basically this like... Good. This is very good. Um... Um, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you spend too much time around Lux. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, he gives you a nod and says that, uh, like, just indicates, I think, the uh, the, the town doctor. Um, yeah. Who shall henceforth be known as, do I go super derivative? I can't think of Freed. it. Freed. Sorry? Do it. Freed. Do it. Freed? Yes. Freed. Is that P-R-E-E-D? So yep, Freed. That'll do. So, Freed the doctor. He says he's probably... Free or Freed? Freed. E-R-E-E-D. I with a pickle. It's like that, the little girl from Hunger Games, but with a D. That's Prue. Phrasing. And yeah. also wrong. <laughs> That's what she's Prue. Okay. Oh, it's Prue. Boring character. Boring character. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, when did you get Jimmy Carr on the show? <laughs> also, as Ingi pointed out, uh, it's a fucking fever. Um, <laughs> I've got a fever. I mean, those, those and the only like... cure. <laughs> Oh, well, well, I guess we know how this interview with the doctor is going to go. Um, cool. Uh, okay, yeah, he's, he indicates like you should go see, like, he breed. He, he'll talk. make sure you're you're okay at some point. Uh, yeah. Stag- Wait, I'll stay. I'll stay over to him and have a, kind of an important conversation there. So our doc- the doctor is on the court. Is that is that what has happened here? Our doctor's still on the court. Yeah. Like, you, cool. you could. Cool. You we have, have like doctor. we've established you have like a lot of the influential people in your court. Um, Margaret and Tangent are two like wealthy businessmen, uh, business people, I suppose. Uh, you've got Greg, who's like yeah, he's like head of the. If if there was such a thing as a trade union, he leads it. Um, you've got yeah, like the doctor. You've got the head of the courier, like the couriers. You've got Midnight, who's like runs the prostitution in the town, and is generally just an influential woman. Um, yeah, is there, is there anything like we don't, you don't have food and you don't have law enforcement? We know very specifically. We we, we have food now. Well, yeah, Parcher, Parcher's sitting there looking irritated at his general surroundings, and yeah, you've got a few people like East Harrow and stuff like that who are ready to like lay down their lives for you and such. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any. Is there anyone else particularly that like stands out in your court for now, or? No, I just I think we, that's what we went through. Yeah. Wasn't it? went through all the names, the high flyers. The high flyers. There's a couple of yeah. There's obviously a few other men and women around, and um, yeah, and and also, I mean, you saw that vision where the black miasma that was all over East Harrow was coming from one of the knights, the suits of armor in the halls of your palace, until like they managed to cut themselves off before you found them. So they might be in this room. Oh, is that what you're going with with that? <laughs> Um, I mean, they're obviously aff- they're affiliated with the court if they're in your mind palace, but I... no, no, no black-haired children with high high-pitched girlish giggles are in this room. I can that, tell you that. that. That would make it so much more easy. I know, right? Almost like when people go into the psychic maelstrom, not quite their reality is is reflected there. It's like it's it's like it's a what's the word? Uh, hallucination. Cool. Right, so yeah, we we all sit down. Do any of you guys have anything to say to each other over the course of um, like this first little like the meeting and greeting and everyone walking up and shaking Tudor's hand as a good to see your Majesty, good to see your Majesty. Um, no, 
No, probably, probably if I haven't seen uh, Stein for a bit, like, really getting work, I probably do approach Stein because he is more, his interaction with Barker as well, and just like, just, just see Barker before I do. Give him a punch in the face, will you? I would, but he's been and gone. And <laughs> I think he's still pretty sore about yesterday. <laughs> a few nights ago. Uh, yeah. A few nights ago, that's the one. I mean,. Stein what happened maybe, a few nights ago? Like he's Stein spending so slept. long in the garage. Yeah. Stein just has like massive bags is, on their eyes because they've just been tinkering with this engine for like three days straight while you've had a fever and you've gone shopping. Oh, yeah. well, that's not good. Well, we've lost the, the Jamie. Oh, okay. I can't ask him uh, uh, what happened a couple of days ago then. Oh, wait. Is he oh, back? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, he's hey, back. He's back. Hey. Yeah, so... um. What? 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 What happened a few days ago? Ugh, oh, fuck. right. Yeah, I I made some passing comment about his menstrual cycle. Uh, I don't know. It's not important. <laughs> it really is. Okay. Um. Yeah. I think Greg walks over at this point and just kind of like he passes a, a glass of water to uh to Lux and just kind of looks at you guys and goes, "That Barker guy. He's a bit of a." Weird. Always seems to be off daydreaming or something. Just never liked to match myself. Keep your eyes up. Keep your eyes peeled, you two. Um. Oh, he's not a bad lad. He's just a fucking idiot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that too. That too. Uh. Just turn to see Chip kissing a snake. Raising. 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 So much raising. <laughs> I'm so glad we're doing this. Look how pretty she is, though. Look how pretty she is. God damn it. So pretty. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, I think a few me meetings and greetings happen. Uh, Preed maybe mentioned something about, like... Yeah, I think Preed comes over to... Um, maybe to, like, you as you're talking to Tangent um, Tudor. And just kind of, like, it brings up guys, uh, like... Medical supplies are running really low right now, and we're not getting any new shipments at the moment. And, you know, kind of looks towards Greg and say, Working conditions aren't getting any safer down on the, in the lower floors. I'm going to kind of need someone to do something about that. Well, I mean, I don't, because I'm pretty safe. Greg might. <laughs> um, yeah. I think Tangent kind of looks up, like looks at him, like pulls out a little notepad and like starts flicking back and forth through pages. Um, yeah, do you say anything, Tudor? You just observe. I'll just observe for a moment as Tangent's clearly, clearly about to say something. No, pre pre he flicks through and he kind of like, you get like the look of like, hmm, and his, like his little like manifest of like, uh, he just kind of looks up and he's like, yeah. Shipments are definitely down for some reason. I've had no reports on why, though. Anyone have any idea where this, these shipments have gone? Have they been hijacked, stolen, uh, gone missing, not been bought? Weather? What? Yeah, I mean... The person who would know the most about, I guess, moving transport is either Tangent or Lux. Um, Tangent, yeah, Tangent's like... All my normal shipments have come in, but they just said, like, they haven't... They kind of haven't had, like, people have been around, they haven't had medical supplies on hand, or at least only, like, a couple uh, narco stabs around, stuff like that. It's been... It's been a... Just for him, it's been a weirdly low supply month. Um, yeah, I think... Lux, you remember Arpus mentioning something about medical supplies? Yeah. When he was, like, briefing you on stuff to come to this meeting... <laughs> but you're like ah. <laughs> yes I, 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 don't, I think Arpus probably isn't a member of the court like yeah. he doesn't necessarily approve but I possibly asked him how things were going I guess, I guess. yeah I think well because Arpus probably recognised it as a business thing but he's just like I yeah, there's a new cult like, he doesn't subscribe to Tudor's like I am the one true king but he, yeah. he like gets like all of the business people in the city but the town are in one place. Yeah, you're going. 
here's like the full rundown and every time you go into one of these meetings he tells you like everything about the like the manifestos and tells you different mm-hmm. agriculture deals and stuff and i presume every time you don't listen yeah basically fantastic yeah he said something about medical report uh, so, so am, am i listening into this this conversation then uh, I think uh, maybe if it gets asked later like you okay, kind yeah. of go or you you have that information yeah cool yeah, I think eventually everyone kind of sits down, talks begin, there's a lot of discussion about, um, yeah, uh, muggings at the hands of, like, or, like, a few lynchings, uh, S- Cecil's private security force have been, like, they've got gone to one of the other bars on, like, a lower floor, or, like, they've just been generally, people's houses have been searched, there's a few dirty looks are cast in Midnight's direction at this point, um, anything to do with Cecil, and, yeah, like, this is mostly being brought up by the guys who lead, like, the machining departments and, like, people like Greg. Greg is very much amiable. Like, he, he mentions, like, he's had increased hassle from security forces and sheriff's men. He doesn't, at any point, like, imply that it's Midnight's fault. He he brings up, like, um, that Rourke hasn't been spotted much around recently, uh, since the last events of, the events in the pub last, um, few nights ago. It's been. We seem to be. He seems to have learnt that we're not to be trifled with, but. Yeah, the tensions are rising. Um, there was a talk of, like. I think it was maybe a, a few people were. Um, went to, like. Lynch one of the, like, Cecil security people or, like, chuck stones at some of, like, their houses and stuff. Um, people got beaten up and arrested. It, it's been a, a rough couple of days. Um, violence is occurring. Uh, does anyone have any comments on this, or do they um, know something? Well, like no, is, is this like we're all in a circle and someone stands up to speak? I what think kind it's definably of... a round table. A round table, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Yeah. And then they have someone stands up and speaks, and there's, there's almost a time for questions then afterwards. Mm, yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. Um... Okay. There's, I, I guess, um, yeah, one of the leaders of like one of the different groups of like industry men is kind of looking around, um, ex- excavation perhaps, which is a pretty shitty job. I mean, a good job in this place. Like, he's, yeah, he's kind of said like some of my boys got um, got into a fight with one of with a couple of sheriff's men a few days back, uh, like. Like one of them took a sh- one of them took um like got beaten pretty bad. He's still he's still in Preed's infirmary. Pre- um Preed line of his. Boy the boy is stable. It's a little dangerous. He hasn't spends a little sm- a very small amount of time conscious, but my, my hope I have good hopes for his recovery. At this point, uh Lux was then sort of sort of just about sort of stand up, like obviously quite shaky. It's like Do you have a name for those guys? Who sent them up? When people go on patrol, sometimes people go missing, and then sits down again. Freed looks a little shocked. Um, yeah, the guy who was who was talking about it. Um, I think his name is Twice. <laughs> um, yeah, Twice, head of excavation. Uh, one second, while I write these down. Freed Doctor Twice, excavator. Yeah, um, Vice goes, Sheriff was in the bar, I don't know the name of every single one of his boys, but I think one of them was called, um, uh, he kind of looks around for a it's like, snaps his fingers and goes, uh, it was called Rob. Well, I don't know, I don't know the other one, um, yeah. Cool. Uh, would I know this Rob from going out on patrols? Um, maybe, like, it's the thing of Cecil's private security looks after him. Sheriff's men are mainly for, like, keeping the peace in town. A couple of them go out every now and again. Most of them work, like, security and perimeter and stuff. So, you maybe have seen them a few times. Um, but I, I oh, wouldn't so say, like, it, it, I think a lot of patrolling gets outsourced to you. Um, okay. Yeah, that's why. So it's more I tend, to, I tend to do like solo. Yeah, I think maybe uh, thing, you run more solo than convoys. 
Yeah, maybe you're like okay. a supply runner to people. Supply runners, people who like are out and about, scavenging resources from nearby or that kind of stuff. But there's a oh, few like okay. external base camps okay. where something is harvested. I don't know exactly what um, from the nearby right. surrounding areas, and you okay. like, you do runs for them and. Never stuff mind. Like that. There, there goes my there goes my plans. Yeah. Uh, occasionally, security men get sent out. You could probably find an excuse. Yeah, no, but it's, it's it's it's. I have to find an excuse to get him out more than, mm. like he's out and about. I can do something. Yeah, it's, it's, which, which therefore brings a lot more tension on me. Yeah. Um, uh, Look at Lux playing it smart. I am sharp. Um, yeah, and that is probably uh, since it was, ah, Rob's not really out and about. If we want. Anything kind of revenge, we'll need to do it in town. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I think um, conversation continues for a while. Parcher makes the occasional, like, completely unhelpful remark. Um, is anyone making any, like, over attempts to bring him into the fold? You're muted, Chip, if you're talking. You're muted, dearie. I know, I'm talking to my mum. Oh, okay, sorry. Um... Yeah, so Parcher makes a few like snide attempts and stuff like uh, snide remarks, things like that. Um, but he's not being, he's he's being specifically bullish and is annoyed at this place because he still has been told who ratted him out. Can I try and manipulate him into getting more involved? Uh, what do you want from him specifically? Just to try and point out that it would be that kind of he could get something out of this and be engaged. Is that there are opportunities? Yeah. Look all around you, kind of stuff. Eh? Okay, yeah. So you're kind of convincing him to, like, share his grand plans and his resources with the rest of the group. Yeah. Can I roll for that? Uh, yeah, give me the roll. Oh, oops. Yep, okay. You get a success. He gives you a look of, like, I better get something for everything I put in. That's kind of how it works. Hmm. Yeah, he, he gives you, like, the, like, uh-huh, sure. <laughs> no one ever exploits anyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he um, he turns around and goes, all right. So, I have a supply route set up with a few of the, the towns on the border of the Great Blizzard. They burn through a lot of food there. Cold place. Workers need a lot of, a lot of good nutrition to get through. Now that tensions are high and I have the pleasure of sitting in this room with you fine people. It turns out that Sheriff's men and Cecil Sack are paying a lot more attention to my delivery trucks and such like that. My, my, sh my shipments. It's getting a lot harder for me to move food where I need it to be instead of where Cecil wants it. You guys can help with that. Make a tidal with this. I'll split you in on the tidal little profit. Uh, it looks at midnight. I hear wrapping men around your little finger is why you're here, miss. Maybe you could talk to Cecil. Well, I am deep inside Cecil's council. Well, hey! <laughs> so I could. Like, uh huh. I could, but Just unfortunately, being deep within Cecil's council means that a small portion of profit isn't a lot of benefit to me. So, what else can you offer? Gives you a second. Like, when did I say? So? He can He like um. What does what does Parcher have? He goes. Fine. Get me my shipments free again. I'll get you my the name of my buddy in Cecil's private security company. Who can I don't know? Keep an eye on that rock boy. Who's been up to some shady business the last few days? Would that help? Or are you and Rourke such good friends? I hear, I hear he made quite the impression here a couple of days back. I think All your right? family made quite the impression on him. <laughs> <laughs> quite literally. Mm -hmm. And Rourke I still is say a man we who easily that forgives and forgets. I'm sure that we will have no repercussions from this event. Which is exactly the moment when you hear a big, like, 
hammer on the door. I thought we were on the third floor. You know, we're on like the, like, it's like a parking lot, and the buildings are inside these parking lots, like. Okay. Yeah, because you've got like, essentially like a bunch of war, like, big giant cubes underground, and then there's on floors. There's like, the second floor contains all of like, the fancy houses, and this floor contains all of like, the shitty houses and the pubs and stuff, and then as you go down, you get more machinery and things like that. Each one is a small, like, village. You get a bang on the door, and you get a... This is, this is the sheriff's department. Open up. We've heard talk of some conspiracy. And that is where we will go to break. <laughs> Fuck YouTube. Um, okay. We will return in three minutes with drama and conspiracy and people with guns. Uh, cool. See y'all in just a second. <laughs>